Hi, it's Marcus. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Cambridge, and I recently graduated from the IB diploma with 43 points. In this video, I'm gonna give you eight tips that helped me get a seven in IB maths. I did HL maths for a year during my year 12, but then I dropped it as I had four hires and I didn't need higher level maths to apply to university. So I have a good understanding of both how higher level and standard level maths works, as well as how people often struggle in both of these. So the main takeaway from this video is when doing IB maths, approaching a question, everything is essentially a series of steps. Whether that's 50 steps that you need to take three different approaches to get to the right answer, or just a simple three or four step equation, what you're learning in maths is essentially to carry out these steps. Therefore, to get the right answer in any maths question, you need to do two things. Firstly, you need to identify what the steps are that you're gonna take. You need to be able to look at a question and think, okay, this is what I need to do. These are the steps that I need to take to answer this question successfully. Then you need to know how to actually do these and then carry out these steps in the correct order. So I think the first part, figuring out what you need to do is by far the hardest. Sure, you can make stupid mistakes in the actual calculations. So it's worth getting to grips with the simple procedures that you need to do in maths. However, looking at a complex seven mark question and knowing exactly what you need to do to solve this is how you differentiate yourself from getting a four to getting an actual seven. Okay, so let's get into the tips. Tip one is to make sure you understand the fundamentals first. If you don't understand the basics, such as the simple rules of integration or factorizing, then you're not going to be able to approach a complicated question. You need to make sure you go through your notes, go through your classes, and try to explain each step of an example question to yourself, and then apply it, maybe by looking at a new question and explaining how you would approach that. What are the steps you would take to solve it? You don't even need to actually solve it, although this can be quite helpful in validating that what you're doing is correct. If you're unable to answer this new question, that's okay. Go back to the start, figure out what you're missing, figure out what the steps are in this particular type of question, and then try again. This leads me on to tip two. Do IB questions right from the start? Your teacher will hopefully set you homework or tests that incorporate some of the harder IB questions on there. I remember when I was doing higher level maths, this was incredibly helpful in really making sure that I actually understood how to do these harder questions and I knew how to approach these. The fact that you're practicing IB questions right from the start means that whenever you get to your mocks or exams or whatever it is that's upcoming for you at the moment, there isn't anything that should shock you. And while yes, the questions in the exams may feel harder than those in the tests or the ones that you've practiced, at least you got that foundation of doing very similar questions Tip three is to go through the questions that you got wrong on tests and homework. I remember my first higher level maths test. It was terrible. I got like a 50% and my teacher was not happy with me. But that was really good for me and it actually helped me because getting maths questions wrong is the best thing you can do for helping you learn. As long as you go really deep into these questions that you got wrong, and you understood, okay, why did I get this wrong? And then you try again with a very similar question and you make sure that you do understand it and you can answer it. When you try a similar question in an exam, you're not gonna be making the same mistake. However, if you look at a test, you got 50% and you just pass it off as, oh, there was a bunch of stupid mistakes. I did this a lot. Then you're not gonna learn anything from these and you're not gonna get the full benefit of them. So really go through your tests, go through your homeworks, go through all the practice questions that you've done and make sure you understand what you've done wrong and how you can learn from that. There are only so many questions in IB maths. The way they can ask you things is really quite limited and there are really very few questions in the exam. So make sure that throughout the year when you're doing practice papers, you take apart what you did wrong and then you immediately try a similar question and do it right. So tip four is to do practice questions by topic. If you look online, you will find practice questions by topic. So what I did before my year 12 end of year exams was to take each topic of practice questions and then do a bunch of these questions in a row. Eventually, I saw some patterns emerging and really these questions became quite repetitive and I could just do them on auto essentially. Even the supposed really hard questions, because they were all quite similar, I had built in me an understanding of the exact steps I needed to take for the different variations of the questions. And this meant I could look at a question and be like, okay, these are the steps I need to take and do it like this. Doing practice questions by topic will allow you to identify these patterns and really build a database of knowledge within you that helps you know exactly how to approach different types of questions. Also, doing practice questions by topic will help you figure out what you know well and what you don't. If you got an average of 50% in one topic and 80% in another, you know which you need to work on most urgently. So tip five is to keep track of your mistakes. So this is particularly in terms of topics. I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but the idea is to keep a spreadsheet with a list of different topics in each subject and highlight which ones you know best, mediocrely or least well. You can also write down any difficulties you have in each specific topic. Then as you're revising, you write down the date that you last revised that topic, as well as the color to represent how you felt, how confident you felt about that topic. This will help you create your revision timetable and schedule your time so that you're studying the most effectively. Tip six is to turn your practice into a game. 
These maths questions are really hard and massive. Some of them are seven marks and will take you 15 minutes to do. So what I would recommend is just to do one question after another, one topic at a time. Then whenever I would finish a question, I would eat a square of dark chocolate. So the type of cooking chocolate that you just stick in your mouth and let it melt. This really helped motivate me and turned it into a game to see how quickly I could finish these questions, making it so much easier to do them and quite a lot of fun really. If you struggle with motivation, particularly with doing past paper questions, then gamifying them can be a great way to boost your productivity. Tip 7 is to know the formula sheet inside out. The formula booklet is your best friend. If you don't know how to use it, if you don't know how to use it, you will get to the exam and you will be lost. However, if you understand everything in it, you know where everything is, and you know how to use all of these equations, then it can be so helpful. It'll save you so much time trying to figure out what the next step is in a question when you realize that it was just in the formula booklet all along. Sometimes you can even figure out what the answers to a question are going to be based off of the formula sheet because you sort of know what they're allowed to ask you and what they aren't. Make sure to practice with the actual formula booklet. I would suggest printing it off at the beginning of the year and taking it to every class, every test that you have, and really get to grips with using it because it is such a helpful tool. So finally, tip eight is to keep your working out tidy. So the best thing I learned during my maths in school was to have good working out when doing questions. I used to be so bad at this. I would skip the working out, just write the answer down, skip steps, and just write it all scuff scruffily with a nice answer at the end that I knew would be right. However, I would lose loads of marks because of this, as it would lead to stupid mistakes, it would lead to me writing down the wrong number sometimes, as well as a lack of understanding. Because if I didn't take proper working out during example questions and when I was doing past paper questions, then when I would go look over them, I wouldn't really understand what I needed to do. And this would cost me a lot of time in figuring out what the steps are to that specific type of question and then applying them when I wanted to use them in the exam. Also, examiners can be brutal, but they can also be quite forgiving. If you have good working out and you show exactly where you went wrong in your steps, then they can give you error carries forward. And sometimes when you feel like you did everything wrong, as long as you took the right steps and you just made a mistake at the beginning, then you can get loads of marks and maybe you only lose one out of five marks because you kept that good working out. However, if you hadn't done that, then you would have lost so many more. I hope you found this video useful and good luck with your IB maths and I'll see you in the next one.